Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us Across the Fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. This is the time of year for spring cleaning. There are things that need our attention both indoors and out. But money experts say this is also a good time for financial cleanup and to discuss that tax refund. So for this month's Money Monday, we're talking with a certified financial planner, Christine Moriarty, about springtime finances. Christine is the president of Money Peace in Bristol. She joins us each month to address specific money-related topics. It's so nice to meet you. Thank you for, for having in. me along, yeah. Fran, and welcome to the show. Well, thank you, it's terrific. So why is spring also a good time for cleaning our finances? Well, I always think of spring cleaning because that's like the terminology people think of, right? I used to do it with right. my grandmother and here it's <laughs> spring. The other thing is you've already gotten ready for your taxes. Right. So you, it's fresh in your mind and you can actually get rid of some of the tax formed it, tax backup stuff and, and from other past. stuff that you So we'll talk about the details but uh, yeah. So how do we decide what to keep and what can go? Well, w um, there's different ways of looking at it. One is will I ever need this financial piece of paper again? And there, there's lots of thoughts on that like is it something I really need mm -hmm. or is it something I can recreate some other way? Right, or even have online. So do you have a, a, a particular approach or methodology? I, I can't help but think of Marie Kondo. Oh, Marie Kondo. Does it give you joy, does but does it doesn't really apply? For I, well, finance. let's say it does. Okay. It does it give you joy. It will give you joy when you can find something really easily in sp instead of spending half a Saturday trying to find a warranty. You know, sure. so that's at the end you'll be joyful. But it will be also joyful because you'll have more space. So right. let's look at the two ways of cleaning. You know, we go room by room when we do a house sure. maybe, right. or we do all the floors, whatever we want to do. But here we gotta say, let's do the paper cleanse and a digital cleanse. Ah, sure. Because think about what you save from a vacation or a trip if you did everything online. Well, you don't need all those still in your files right. if it's online. And the same with paper, like what do I need to keep in hard copy or what can be recreated? All right, so it, it, now it's decision time. What mm -hmm. can I get rid of? Well, I, I created a chart to make it a little bit easier, like of what we absolutely need and what you can think about getting rid of. Okay. So there's important papers. And if we look at this chart, across the top is all the different topics. And down each column, I'm going to talk about as far as the tax forms. Great. You need to keep your tax forms forever. That, okay. Yeah, okay. Huh. It can be online or hard copy, meaning you can have it digitally, um, because after you retire, they, it helps with calculations. There's all sorts of reasons to keep them forever. So just okay. keep one file box, if you have a file box, or one file on the computer with all of your tax forms. But, but not all the receipts and everything. No, right. that's the backup. Right. You're okay. required by law to keep that for three years. Okay. And if they, you can keep it for seven is what I recommend, because they can audit you back seven mm. years. Mm -hmm. but three years by okay. law. Insurance statements, all you need to do is keep those while it's relevant. Mm -hmm. The year it's in, and sometimes people have their policies going back forever. Now if it's a whole life or a life insurance policy or annuity, that's different, but if it's your car insurance, your home insurance, keep the policy, but the, all the statements and everything can go. Right. Loan documents, Keep them, you know, a handful of years afterwards to make sure, even if you've paid off the car loan or something, mm. that it's registered on your credit reports. Interesting. And okay. because that's your only documentation that you actually paid it off, is right. if you have the loan document in the letter. And mortgage loans as well. Mortgage okay. loans as well. Yeah. You, you don't want to get rid of it day one, even though it's very tempting to right. say, hey, I got it paid off. Right. Stock certificates are interesting because that very few people use them now, but you right. might find them in a grandparent's safe or right. something, and you want to find keep them until they're sold. You need to use those certificates to sell something, and they should be kept somewhere safe in a safe deposit box because that is the only representation that you own it. The only time to get rid of it is if it's worthless. Huh. So okay. there are some stocks that are gone, and I know I did that once. Um, 
for my dad and just wrote it off on a tax year that he had. So I put it with his tax paper. So hold on to certificates. Don't think they're gone and if you don't right. know. Investment statements, it varies, but you should keep it, you know, anytime there's a transaction on it and only keep the one at the end of the year. So December 2018, December 2017, you don't right. need every single statement. Just get the end of your statement. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah. Retirement statements, the same way. You know, okay. once you get the end of year and know it's all set, there you go. And then cell phone contracts and any other um, utility contract like that, just while well, they're valid. We don't have to save all of those. If we've been paying the bill, you're good. Okay. So you can see that having, like knowing what to have is really important because right. sometimes people start this cleaning process and don't have a clue and then get bogged down finding a place for everything. Right, right. But having a file for each of those that you need to keep is, is important. Great right. chart. And, and what other, are there other important papers? There's that we other think important about? papers, yeah. That the tax backup oh, that we talked, we talked about. about right? So you can keep it for seven years. I just keep it in a separate file box or envelope. And at the end of every tax season, I get rid of. The, the one that's that seven, seven years, years back. Back. Yeah, right. it's very easy. Yeah. That's what I said, spring great. cleaning. <laughs> it does feel great. Legal documents, as long as they're valid, you want to keep them. Sure. If you have an old will lying around, this happens to a lot of people. Burn it, shred it, do something. You don't uh, so want the old will. Yes, you don't want the old ones. Right. Credit right. card statements, as soon as you pay them, you can get rid of them. Great. However, if there's a warranty or something on it, that's when you want to keep it. Hmm. Savings bonds. These were issued in hard copy for years. So some people might have one that their grandmother gave them or something. That you want to keep safe in a safe deposit box or somewhere because that's your proof that right. you own it. Um, and then when you're sold, you get rid of it. Bank statements, same thing, as needed. You really, the end of the year is fine. But keep it during the year and then just like every year, get rid of them. Every year, yeah. If, as long as you know it's right. Right. Say utility bills, you paid it, okay. it's done. done. Then as soon as the next one comes in, get rid of the old one. And then my favorite is personal info. Always think, well, think about it. And I don't want to use all the examples that I can think of, but the easiest one is my grandmother had love letters from a former flame. And so how long do you want to keep those around the house? Who's going to be cleaning the house? You know, <laughs> right, like right. they may bring you joy, though. Marie right. Kondo may say keep them. But right. Just think but it's about up to those. You. It's up to do you. They, do they give you joy? And where do you keep them? And maybe you keep them in a box that says, Dump this. Let dump if, as <laughs> if I die. <laughs> right. <laughs> do not open. <laughs> Let it go. <laughs> Let it go. So what's something we can do right now to start with our spring I, financial cleaning? I would say that uh, all the l viewers can right now write down one thing they're going to do in the next week. So you could say, hey, I'm going to file my tax forms or, oh, I'm going to put my old um, paperwork in envelopes so I'll be ready to dump that tax back up. Or I'll just go through the utility bills while I'm watching the Red Sox game coming right. up this weekend. So you don't have to do it all at once, nah. but, but tackle it a bit at a time so it's not burdensome. Basically. Right. And, you know, I have, exactly. I did have a client who did it all in one weekend with her husband. They set God up blessed. a table and did it. Yes, exactly. God bless. That was their <laughs> focus. I had someone else who went out and got all of the storage containers. I don't recommend that. Organize first, then get the storage containers. Okay. <laughs> and what other uh, money matters do you like to highlight at this time of year? This time of year, it's a big thing. A lot of people get refunds. Sure. And, you know, if you're one of the luckiest ones to get it, you may have a plan for that money, but I want people to think about it differently. So whether you get a bonus at work or a big gift from a family member or a tax refund, the, anything that's unexpected, unallocated, and not needed immediately, you should have a bigger plan for it instead of, I call it bonus money, yeah. instead of just saying, oh, I got it, let's throw it in the checkbook and spend it. So what's your recommendation for that bonus money? The recommendation is enjoy it and let it help your bigger goals so that it doesn't just disappear. So it, my recommendation is think of it in thirds. So. Oh. If you think of money in thirds, past, present, and future, what are my goals? So the past is your debt. 
maybe you don't put it all towards debt, but a third of it going towards a credit card debt that's bothering you, a school loan, mm -hmm. your mortgage even. Present, hmm. do you have enough in your savings account safety to fall back on? I've talked about that on this mm -hmm. show. But more importantly, maybe it's something fun to do now. Oh, we'll go to Montreal for the day. Or, oh, I'll get that new grill I've been talking about. And then future retirement, something long term, maybe funding a grandchild's um, mm -hmm. education. So if you think in thirds, that money then is going to be better spent and you're going to feel better about it and you're not going to forget where it went. That's brilliant. So a third for the debt and a third for now and a third for saving. Right. That's, I love that. So um, just can you sum up your springtime financial cleanup? We're just about out of time. Yes. Um, springtime is the time to l refresh both your finances and your attitude around money. So take that bonus money one with you and think about cleaning out those files because it will weigh you down a lot less. Right. Well, this has been terrific. I am inspired now. <laughs> and if you have questions um, about uh, or comment for Christine, you can uh, contact Christine Moriarty at www.moneypeace.com. You can also call her at 802-453-5913. It's um, really wonderful that you're open to, to this, and you should join us also for other editions of Money Monday. I'll be up. back. It's really terrific. I'll be back next regularly. month, okay. and we'll check on how you've done and the reviews <laughs> have done. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you so much for coming in, Christine. Take care. And thank you for joining us Across the Fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. Uh -huh.